gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. And when you come into the presence of God, there is joy, there is peace, there is transformation, there is renewal. So we are not going to go back from, the, from this place the way you came. We come to Sunday service to meet with God, share our burdens with Him and receive something from Him. I'm sure God is with us. I thank God for this Northeast Fellowship. I thank God for the pastor and the people who are leading this. And I thank God because God gave me an opportunity to come to Bhuvaneshwar and be with this fellowship. And I thank God for my friend, Roy Alex, who arranged this for me. You know, it just happened that four months ago, I started praying for Northeast. I don't know why. God gave me a burden. The only connection I have with Northeast was I have a classmate called Mary Ralte from Mizoram. And she was a good singer and she was a good friend of mine. We were in the same music group and we were in the same EU group. So that's the connection that I have about from Northeast. Then from her and from her father, I came to know that there was a big revival in Northeast. So I was very excited that at least one part of our country had a revival. And because I have been praying for a revival of the whole country. And that beginning of last year, I've started hearing and seeing things which I thought wasn't too good for the Northeast. So by the middle of last year, God started telling me that I need to pray. So I started praying for the Northeast. So somebody, a Catholic boy in the Northeast, just added me into his WhatsApp group. I don't, I've never met him. I've spoken to him a couple of times. He says, I'm a missionary in the Northeast. I said, why don't you come down and stay with me? So I'm still in that WhatsApp group and I see all the messages and once in a while I put my message in that and I know I'm here maybe because I prayed for Northeast or maybe because there's somebody who is wanting an encounter with God or maybe because God is wanting an encounter with Northeast again and maybe you are the one whom God is going to use. I really don't know which one of us is going to happen but one is going to happen and God loves the whole of Northeast. One reason I love Northeast is because of the music. Everybody coming from Northeast, you ask them to sing, they sing. Most of them will take a guitar and play. I say, wow, how do these people get this kind of music? And they can sing in parts, they can continue to sing, and they can sing for hours. And I love music. Because the only thing that came down from heaven is music. Hallelujah. Can we say hallelujah? It's all free. No, no charge. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I love saying hallelujah. I'm a neurosurgeon. Basically, I operate for hours. But I love saying hallelujah because in heaven there is no neurosurgery. <laughs> there is no brain tumor. There is only hallelujah. So, and music is from heaven. And that is why the devil uses music maximum. Because he was a chief musician. His name is Lucifer. And he disobeyed God and came down with music. So 90% of the Indian music or American music or the present world day music is all corrupted. It's from the devil. I tell my son, he will not believe. He likes to listen to all the music. And last week he came to me and said, Papa, have you heard white metal? I said, I'm fed up with white and black and blue also. <laughs> he said, white metal is Christian metal. And he made me listen to some of them. He loves music. He's a doctor, but he wanted to be a music director. I wanted him to be a doctor. So he says, if you tell him about some band in any part of the world, he'll say, yes, I know. And if I tell him some new kind of music, he says, yes, yes, I know about that. So he's crazy about music. You know, it's good to be crazy about music. And one person came to me when I said about all these things. He said, what music do you think is going to be in heaven? Is it going to be jazz, blue, or the real church music? I said, when we go to heaven, we'll see what music it's going to be. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 My heart is singing. Is your heart singing this afternoon? Is your heart singing? There was a man who had a singing heart. That is, his name was David. Because he had a singing heart, God made him a king. So if you want to have, become a king, what should you have? A heart that is praising him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, he came to me and asked me that what is a portion that he should read today. I said, what of a portion you prepared you read? So he said, it's from Acts. It's a beautiful portion that he read from Acts 22. I'm not going to speak from that, but I just use it as an introduction. It is about Paul speaking something. And Paul is a man with a vision. 
And he had a vision in when he encountered Christ at Damascus. That's the first vision he had. Then he had many times visions in the darkness, in the ship, in the shipwreck. Many occasions he had vision. So Paul became Paul because of his vision. Before the vision, he was Saul. Before the vision, who was he? He was Saul. Saul became Paul because of his vision, and he decided to walk with a man called Ananias. Barnabas. So if you walk with the man of God and you have a vision, then you become Saul to Paul. To, uh, Saul to Paul. And finally he stands in the end in chapter 26 in Acts. He says, King Agrippa, I have never been disobedient to my vision. He always quotes his vision. Many times he quotes his vision. Even in chapter 22 he quotes his vision. Let me ask you, have you ever had a vision? If there is no vision, you perish. That's what the Bible says. People without vision perish. You don't want to perish, right? Anybody wanting to perish? You? No, you don't want to perish. So what do you need today? If you don't want to perish, what do you need? You need a vision of God. You need a vision of your life. You need a vision what you need to do in life. There are different types of visions in life. I have not yet come to my subject. It's only an introduction. And what kind of vision? It depends on what kind of eyes you have. The vision depends on what? The kind of eyes you have. Before microscope came, people never knew there was something called microbes. Now millions of microbes are there. So a new vision came, that vision is called what vision? Microscopic vision. Before telescope came, people didn't know that there was something in, called planets and things like that. When the telescope came, the vision became telescopic vision, where they started seeing so many things. Then, vision started increasing, ultra microscope, very special microscopes. Finally, the vision has become so powerful that you have now something called night vision camera, that you can see visions at night. So I'm not talking about microscopic vision, macroscopic vision, telescopic vision, night vision. Some people are color blind. You know what they mean? Color blind. They don't have a vision of color. Some Christians are colorblind. That means, I know of a friend who is colorblind, he drives car, and when the signal is red, he doesn't think, he thinks it's green and he grows across. Very dangerous to be colorblind, no? So some Christians are colorblind. Means for them everything is green, you can do anything, never mind, God loves you. <laughs> it's colorblind Christians. They, there's no red color in their life. I hope there's no colorblind Christians here. You know, there are some reds in between where there's no, no, you're not supposed to do. No, 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 I like to do everything. There's freedom in Jesus Christ. So I like to do everything. No, no colorblind Christians. I'm not talking about those visions. Color vision, night vision, telescopic vision, microscopic vision, microscopic vision. I'm talking about heavenly vision. In the last days, all of you will have dreams and visions. And if there is anyone who hasn't seen a vision, Hallelujah. This afternoon is going to be the afternoon of vision. He is going to give you new visions. It doesn't matter what your age is. In Joel it says you are going to see dreams and visions. Today my topic is not visions. I would have loved to speak on spoken on visions. Because that gives me about an hour and a half to speak on visions. But I am giving you an introduction so that you start having visions. I started having vision about Northeast four months ago. Now I see myself speaking in different states of Northeast. I'm already started seeing. I don't know whether you have seen, but I'm seeing. I'm going to run around. Before the devil captures many of those states, I want to conquer for the Jesus and get back that revival that, that was there and the places that are perishing back for Jesus. Do you have that burden? Anybody with that burden? Or you just want to pass your exams? Or just want to get a job? Or just want to have something done, some problem in your life? Have a heavenly vision. Have the heart of the heavenly father, what he wants you to do in your life. And he will exactly show you and help you to do what you need to do. Now I'm coming to my topic today. It's a wonderful topic. It is about prayer. And I'm sure you would have heard millions of messages about prayer. 
but you're going to hear a very unique message this afternoon. A person's life will depend on the content of his prayer. A person's life will depend on the content of his prayer. You listen uh, to a man of God praying, then you know what is the spiritual level he has. Some people have quick prayers. Most of the people go to the bed, they'll say, God, you know, I'm very tired and please pray, take care of everything. I have exams tomorrow, I've studied everything. So thank you, God bless you and you know you love me and I love you. And that's called short, just like fast food, fast prayers. It's good to have fast prayers. But you also need to have some serious prayers. We have fast food and fast prayers. I also make fast prayers, like telegraphic prayers. Sometimes it's very helpful to have telegraphic prayers. But how is your prayer life this morning? How is your life and walk with Jesus? You know, walk with Jesus, not one day, two day God. He walked with God for 300 years. I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior when I was just five years old. I got filled with the Holy Spirit when I was eight years old. I started praising and preaching when I was 10 years old. I love my Jesus. I mean business in my spiritual life. I'm serious about the kingdom of God. And I believe every word that is written in this Bible is true. A patient of mine came to me and asked me, Doctor, do you think every word is true? I said, yes. Do you think every word written in the Bible, you can do it? I said, Bible has not written anything which you cannot do it. Oh, really? You better do it if it's written here. Now, people don't believe God. I don't argue with them because God never argued. It says, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. It's a grace to believe in God. You all have received the grace to believe in God. If there is anybody who doesn't believe in God today, I have no time for you. But you can get to YouTube and check on Atheist Delusion. It's a good uh, one hour uh, video where you will learn something about how to handle your atheistic problems. I start with the concept and believe that all of you believe in God, right? That all of you believe in God, right? All of you believe in Jesus. All of you know that he is your savior. All of you have been business. All of you think that you need a wish. All of you think that you need a energy this afternoon, a divine energy and divine power to transform your life to something which you've never been before. You are in the presence of the living God. And God wants something very different in your life this afternoon. And I know you're not going to go back the same way. And if I can share with you some basic things about prayer, that will transform you. I will leave this place in a week's time. But God will not leave you. He will change your life. So for today's meditation, I'm going to take you to a couple of verses. And I'm sure God is going to bless you. And we are going to study a beautiful study on the prayer. And I would model with Christ first. I will take Christ as the model and I start from there. So shall we turn to Luke's Gospel chapter 9 verse 28 to 32. This, this first part was for the Bible reading. Now rest is for what I'm going to share. So Luke's Gospel chapter 9 verse 28 to 32. If there is anybody with a Bible, please read that for me quickly. And we will go quickly because we have a lot, lot of things to cover this afternoon. Yes, please. Yes. He took Peter, John, he took Peter, John, John and James, James, James with him, with him. went up onto a mountain to pray. So Jesus had the habit of praying. What did Jesus have? A habit of praying. He had certain mountains where he prayed. Do you have a mountain to pray? There is a movie called War Room. If you have never seen it, please see it. It's a beautiful movie. I was in US when it was released in an Easter, and I saw it the very first it was first week it was released. Beautiful movie. War room is the room where you pray. That's a prayer room. It's a beautiful movie. Jesus had a mountain where he prayed. Do you have a mountain where you pray? And he took three disciples. Partiality, no? Three of disciples. Peter, John, and James. In, along with Jesus, there are little differences in his dealings. There is a big crowd which comes every Sunday. That crowd is for uh, seeing the miracle, eating the food, having some fun, some songs, this, that, the other. 
and making some friendship, networking. These are the crowd which come. Hello, how are you crowd? Who comes to give business card to Jesus Christ and say, I'll call you when I have my examination. We have an examination prayer after this. Very special prayer. Everybody will come. More people come for examination prayer than ordinary Sunday prayer. And better prayer is called ICU prayer in front of my ICU. Neurosurgery ICU. You have good earnest prayers I can see. People on the knees and people standing like this and you look at their face. You know they mean business in their prayer. No casual prayers. Here Jesus is taking Peter, John and James. They are beloved disciples. Let me ask you, are you a crowd this afternoon? Crowd to fill the pew? Or are you just a disciple? What is the difference between a disciple and a crowd? Disciple is the one who follows him 24 7 who is a scholar who is a learner the meaning of disciple is scholar he is a learner he reads the bible he understands what god wants him to know and he is the one who obeys disciple is the one who is willing to obey and who is these three these three are called the beloved disciple peter john and james so the next question is are you a beloved disciple or an ordinary disciple and the final question is there's one disciple who really sleeps on the bosom of jesus you know his name right his name is john and he is the most beloved one i don't want you to lift your hand but who is the most beloved one this afternoon who leans on the bosom of his savior there are different levels in christian life you can choose it you can be a non-playing captain you can see outside you can watch everything have fun and go doesn't matter you can follow christ from far but if you mean business and you want to follow him seriously you better listen to all what is happening. So then Jesus took these three people because they were more serious than the other disciples. And he thought they are going to help him in his prayer. And they took him to a place where he was going to pray. And then what happened? Let's listen to what happened. What happened? As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed. Oh, hallelujah. And his clothes became yes. as bright as yes. flash of yes. light. We just wait a moment on that point. As he was praying, his appearance changed. Has ever your appearance changed? I'm not talking about after you come out of your beauty parlor. <laughs> you know, people sell a lot of fair and lovely and all that kinds of things because you are not praying. If you're praying, you don't need all that. All these powders are makeups. I hope there's no makeup Christian here. I don't, I'm not against makeups. You can make out that I don't, I'm not against makeups. But there is a prayer that can change your countenance, where it transforms your inner being, which flows out through your face, which makes your friend recognize you as a different person, which makes the world understand that God is in you, that Jesus is alive. Christ, the hope of glory, alive in you. First Colossians chapter 1, verse 26. That is the biggest mystery of the kingdom of God, that Jesus, the hope of glory, is alive in you. Your prayer makes that difference. When you pray an earnest prayer, the first thing that happens is that your countenance changes. I want you to practice this kind of prayer. You know yoga masters come and they say you have to do yoga like this. In India it's full of yoga, like that. And the first time the student comes and the yoga master will stand on his head and say this is called Shirsasana. They stand on his back and make a bow and say this is Chakrasana and another asana, all kinds. And the student will look like this and say no, 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 I can't do all these things. But after one month, two months of this thing, or to practice, then you see him also doing all these tamashas. The first prayer, your countenance is still dark because you're still worried and crying. You're so worried about yourself and your future, your studies, your job, your family, your financial situation, that only tears is there, no change, no joy. Your countenance will start changing as you spend time with God. At this very particular moment, the ultimate effect is that your countenance start changing. His countenance changed. Not only his countenance changed, what else changed? Clothes became as bright as flash of lightning. Can you imagine your clothes getting changed when you are praying? Have you ever imagined? You believe that this is true? You believe it's true, right? So you must pray. See, I am praying that Elijah went around without visa and passport. 
uh, from one place to the other. I also know of a man who went to, uh, uh, an evangelist called Philip who went to baptize one eunuch and he came back without any ticket. So I'm praying for such kind of an experience. Well, if it can happen to Philip, I analyze it, it can happen to me, right? Unless you pray, only you receive it. You pray for local things, you get local things. You pray for greater things, you'll get greater things. It depends on the content of your prayer. You get what I'm saying? If you may change the attitude of your prayer to something which are impossible humanly, it becomes possible by the divine power that is working in your life. So you have to change the small local prayers. Most of our prayers like shopping list. Give me that, give me this, give me that, give me this, do this, do that. No. Your whole lifestyle of prayer has to change. Then your Christian life will change. His countenance changed and what happened? The cloth started changing. So it is a change from outside in or inside out. It's a change from inside out. The cloth started shining because of the inside change. A lady came and touched Jesus' garment. She had 12 years of blood issue. Immediately the issue stopped. From the back she came and received the blessing and she was going to go back like the garment of his back business. But Jesus said, who touched me? Somebody is going to touch God tonight, today, this afternoon. And that power is going to flow from back. Truly, nobody wanted to see. Just closely went and just touched the garment. And Jesus said, who touched me? Disciples said, Lord, the people are touching. Everybody is pushing you. What the hell? How can we say, who touched you? No, no, no. There's somebody touched me. A lady by faith touched the garment. Caught her by neck. She was shivering. She realized, I'm caught. Because testimony is very important. You can't go back with just blessing. You have to come in front. She came in front, she made, he said, daughter, how are you? I need to see your face, not see my back and go. You see my face also. He stand in front of me. And she saw his face and she was very happy after the healing. And Jesus said, the power flew from me, not from my clothes. People think it's from the clothes that came, no. Many people like to keep some cloth and handkerchief and all. Uh, power also can come through it, but there is a power inside that person. I am talking about the power that's going to dwell in your heart, the power of the resurrected Christ. How many of you have this power this afternoon in your heart, the power of resurrection? If you don't have that, Sunday meetings are meaningless. If you don't have that, your Christian life itself is meaningless because Jesus has resurrected to give you that power. And that power comes into your life only by prayer. Hallelujah. Only if you have your hand up, you can lift up free, no charge. Hallelujah. There's no barring for lifting hands here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know why? Because I see only paralyzed hands. I'm a neurosurgeon. By the time they come, the hands are paralyzed. So if you have the hands working, you can praise God in between saying, Hallelujah. I like to clap hands. I like to sing. I like to praise God because I believe God means business with me. And I mean business with Him. So let us have more intense prayer. So I'm going to take you to more, more, more areas of what prayer is going to be. Exodus chapter 34, verse 30. Moses was a man who spent some time with God. And he was not a great man of God when God caught him. He was a murderer, just like Saul. And Saul became Paul when he walked with God and God's people. Same way when Moses was caught, he was a murderer. But towards the end, he was the most gentle being. There was no person like Moses, a great prophet, most humble man, most aggressive man becoming the most humble man over the walk with God. Now here Moses is having an experience, Exodus 30, 34 verse 30. Can we read quickly? When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses. Yes, when Aaron, the other priest, the main man, and all the Israelites saw Moses. His face was radiant. His face was radiant. Now when you go back from here, your friends are going to look at your face and they say, Hey, what happened? Every Sunday you are going, but this Sunday your face is getting different. Hallelujah. You know, in our church, in Trishur, in Kerala, people will come with dark faces. After three services, their face change. And the members will itself say, okay, this man's face is starting to change. I like to hear that testimony. Otherwise, don't come to church if your face is not changing. Why are you coming to church? 
Singing songs? Yes, singing songs is very good. Hearing some message, too, oh, yeah, that is also good. But ultimately, your face has to change. That is why you have come here. Moses' face was changing because he happened to spend time with God. God called Moses, Moses, you come up to the mountain. I want to talk with you. If God calls today's Moses, he will say, let me take my laptop, my tiffin, my water. Wi-Fi has to be there because he has to call his wife in between. And that's why it's called Wi-Fi. <laughs> Some connection to the earth, spending time with God, but in between with, with the people around. His face won't change. You will come back after two days because too much connection here. And today's Moses will have a tough time. The more than ten days, how will a Moses go to mountain? So that is why there is no Moses now. If somebody can spend 40 days up alone with God, you are going to have some change. You don't mean business so far, but God has brought you for some business. I told you I accepted Christ when I was only five years. And I started taking this Bible and started going to the streets when I was less than ten years. And I know my Jesus. And I know He lives. Jesus is saying yesterday, today and forever. He's an unchanging God. He's an almighty God. He's an all-sufficient God. He's resurrected and seated on the right hand of the Father. He's able to do much more than you can imagine this afternoon. And miracles are real if you believe in a God of miracles. And my life is full of miracles. Has anyone heard my testimony? No, you haven't. I put it up in YouTube. I thought you all like YouTube. So you just need to type my name, George Kovur, George Kovur, K-O-V-O-O-R, and get into the YouTube because I cannot tell all my testimony today because you may have to stay for three days. Since we don't have so much of time, for convenience or want of time, type George Kovur. You can subscribe and share, it doesn't matter. And go into the YouTube. Most of it is Malayalam because I thought Malayalam was the heaven's language. Only now I realize there are more languages. So I preach for more than uh, 300, 400 messages of Malayalam. But you have about 100 of them in English too. So you can go to the playlist, choose the messages. If you want 10 minutes like fast prayers, you have fast messages. You want one hour ones, there are one hour. Up to two hour, three hour ones you have. So depending on your timing, how much you want to spend, you can take each one of them. And see what God wants to talk to you. But let me start my testimony a little bit in the beginning itself before I go forward. When I was born, I was born as a hydrocephalic baby. I don't know whether, any medical people here? Anybody in the medical side? Okay, one, only one person. Okay. Hydrocephalus means hydro means water. Cephalus means head, water in the head. I was not born as a normal baby. I was born as a hydrocephalic baby. And imagine my parents, my father has come to accept Christ and my mother, my father is a pastor, my mother is an evangelist. And when they came to know Christ and then they started following Jesus, here comes a baby who is with a, a problem in the brain, with water in the brain. They took, took me to all the doctors. They said, this boy will not live. He will be physically, mentally retarded, good for nothing. People will look at you and say, useless, good for nothing. Even your parents will say, why are you like this? Why are you doing all this? <laughs> Don't listen to anyone. Listen to God. Don't listen to people when they talk negative against you. <coughs> devil wants to criticize you. Devil wants to break you. Devil wants to ridicule you. Devil wants to destroy you. But Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and life in abundance. John chapter 10 verse 10. Jesus wants to give you abundant life. How many of you have abundant life? Or you are living ordinary life? Just getting up every morning, uh, one more day, so much of things to do. Like Royal X told me, today is a very busy day for me. I said, what is happening? He said, you have four meetings to attend. I said, no problem. I can go to six meetings, ten meetings. Problem is for other people. For me, sitting in the presence of God, more and more time, it's only good for me. One service is no problem. Hundred services is more, more good fun. I'm in the presence of God. I'm enjoying God's presence. How many of you like, you are suffocated, it's your problem. It's mine. I enjoy the presence of God. He is my provider. He is my protector. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Jehovah Nisi, my banner. Jehovah Shalom, who is with me, my peace. Jehovah Shammah, who will never leave me. He is the one who guides me. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He created sun, moon and stars. He is my God. Is he your God? Have you ever had an encounter with him? Do you really pray to him? 
Do you know your prayers are serious? And your prayer is going to make difference in not only your life, but the life of Northeast. The whole region is going to be blessed by the prayer. There's somebody in this group whom God wants to take. I don't know whether he's a young or old or lady or a man, but he wants to use you to transform that region, to send back that revival. You need to spend time like Moses. He spent 40 days. When he came down, his face started shining. When you spend 40 days with God, your face will start shining. Have you ever tried this? I started, faith, started fasting right from my younger days. Means I fast, I used to, my father and mother used to fast on Saturday, Sunday. So I started the first time. And the night I became very hungry and everybody was going to sleep. But 12 o'clock I said, time is over. I said only evening fast. 12 o'clock is next morning. I ran and opened the fridge and had as much as I could have and told, didn't tell anyone. That's how I started my fasting. I couldn't fast. I realized my cravings for food was far higher. Slowly, slowly God gave me strength. Then I started fasting one time, two times. When I came to 10th standard, I could fast for three, four days. Before getting to MPBS, I prayed for seven days and I got my admission by miracle. Everything is miracle. I pray and fast. In 2016, my father was very sick and I was in his hospital and I read the Bible verse which says, man shall not live by bread alone. I said, this is a serious verse. Why am I eating too much of bread? It's was true. I was a foodie like anything. I wanted to eat everything. And I had 120 kilos, big tummy and a huge man. I said, why should I be living like this? If you can live without bread, Bible says you man shall not live by bread alone. And then I next three months I had only one meal. It was very difficult. But it changed my attitude, it changed my power, it changed my energy, it changed my outlook. I became more heavenly and less earthy. It changed everything in my life, whole perspective in my life. So if you have never fasted, I challenge you to fast. If you have never prayed in your life more than half an hour, start praying more time. Now when I pray in the morning, my wife and daughter, son never comes into the room because there's, they will get electrocuted. Yeah, there is so much of power. After I go back from the chair, my son will go and sit on the chair and say, Papa, this is fantastic. I like this feeling on the chair. <laughs> you have that kind of energy. You need to sit in the presence of God. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The secret of my energy is not boost and holics. My secret of my energy is Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Clap your hands, sister. I saw that. I saw that. Put your hands nicely. I love people who like to clap their hands. I wish I had a stool, I could throw, keep the book here and start clapping my hands. Because if I clap my hands, the devil in 100 kilometers will fly away. How many of you know that? A man of God claps his hand as a powerful, it creates at atmospheric changes. Tsunamis in the atmosphere, spiritual tsunamis that the devil gets scared. I told my friend Roy as I've landed, the, the mayor and the chief minister doesn't know, but the devil knows I have come. And now he was telling me, it's really true. Wherever you are going, you are creating problems. I said, I'm going to another one. You can see the rest of it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> My Jesus is alive. Do you know that? And he means business with you. He wants to shake Northeast. Is there anybody ready to shake the place? When the disciples prayed, the prison shook. When they praised, the prison shook. The building shook. Now prayers are all cozy, hallelujah, very sweet and nice. It's good to have all that. <laughs> I'm not against, it's all good. But have something which is dynamic, which changes things. Why am I so excited? A hydrocephalic baby who was destined to die. All the hospitals were closed, sent away. The CMC Medical College where I studied my MCH, neurosurgery, went on. My professor, Dr. Jacob Chandi, the first neurosurgeon of the country, Dr. Jacob Abraham, both of them said this child will not live. My parents came back, they realized there was no surgery at that time. They were taking water out of the fluid, out of the brain and sending. Now there is a surgery, I operate such children. I put a tube in the brain and put it into the stomach called ventricular peritoneal shunt surgery. Thank God there was no surgery. Otherwise some neurosurgeon would have lagged out his life on my head. Doctor dependent, shunt dependent, medicine dependent, hospital dependent. Miserable life. We need a God dependent life. Hallelujah. Not a man dependent life. Holy Spirit dependent life. 
power dependent life, the word of God dependent life, spiritual life, that is spiritual life. I'm talking about spiritual life. I'm talking about spiritual energy. I'm talking about transformation. I'm talking about renewal. I'm talking about serious prayer. God loves you. God loves India. Hallelujah. God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God loves you more than you can even imagine. More than your own mother and father. Even before you were born he saw you. And he has planned everything for your life. You don't have to worry. Imagine he created me as a hydrocephalic baby with water inside. But I was fearfully and wonderfully made. My days are written in the book, book of life. You are listening to God's voice this afternoon. And I know God has a plan in your life. Moses spent time 40 days with God. I challenge you to spend time with God. I challenge you to pray longer than you have been doing. I challenge you to study the word of God. You will become powerful. Your face will start shining. People will recognize the change in you. I can tell you a story also. I did MS in Lithuania. After my MBBS, I wanted to do MS surgery. And all the Malayalis took up medicine because the professor was in medicine, was a Malayali, and you can easily pass, you can get admission and quickly go. There's no opposition there. But the, in surgery, professor was a Sardarji, Sikh, Punjabi guy. So if you take some surgery, CM Singh was there, all the people are all uh, Punjabi people, and then they will make sure. I was told in one after three, four months, that we are sending you to a special registrar for special training. So I thought I'm going to learn more. So I, I was excited. Then the evening I asked somebody, what is the special training that fellow is going to give me? He said, sending people in the train back to Kerala is called training. <laughs> so I didn't know that was the training that I was going to get. That I'm going to quit the job and go fast. So they made everything difficult for me. I was like Elijah having a barren time and a crow coming in between to give me something. There were days when I couldn't sleep, there were days when I couldn't eat, there were days when I was falling, uh, you know, in the theater or on the way. Um, that much of struggle I had, but God was with me. You know how I got into the seats? Very big miracle. My CM Singh professor went to take rounds and a Punjabi lady, a Sardarni, whose favorite uh, patient of his asked him, where is Jesus Christ? He said, Jesus Christ? And he comes with you every day. Who is Jesus Christ? That tall man with the glasses. Oh, that is Jesus Christ. I was on leave that day. <laughs> so she thought, I was not, so CM Singh got the shock. He said, Jesus Christ, his wife is a Malayali. So she asked him, why is this fellow Jesus Christ? When he comes, there is so much of peace in the room. When he touches my wound, there is no pain. God's heart is speaking to him. Whenever he comes to the ward, the Holy Spirit will guide me there. So he thinks I'm 24-7 in the ward. I'm never in the ward. He will tell me exactly the time when CM comes to the ward. And I'm also there. I'm sitting there. George, you are here? Yes, I'm here. In the night, 1 o'clock, sometimes I'm sitting there. And he comes. He, I don't know how he comes, but I'm there when he comes. So he thought 24-7 I'm there. One day I'm taking rounds in the ICU. And I'm treating a patient. Five patients in the ICU. Mine is a general surgery patient and an orthopedic surgery patient is there. That man is calling me like this. He said, you are different. He's not my patient. He's somebody else is watching me. I said, no, oh, yeah, I'm different. What is the difference in your life? I said, I have Jesus in me. He's a Punjabi. He said, you have Jesus in me, in you? Please tell me what that is. I said, who are you? He said, I'm an orthopedic surgeon. I've been watching you, taking care of that patient. I knew there was something different in your life. Please call all my relatives from outside and tell them what that difference is. Luckily, the nurse in charge was a believer. I said, can I do some mission work here? She said, yeah, yeah. I called all the relatives from outside, all the children, locked the door, and I shared about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is alive. He is the Son of God, the only begotten Son. He was the Word in the beginning. He created everything. Nothing was formed without Him. Everything was formed through Him. And even today things are formed by Him and from Him. Happens through Him and by Him. As nothing else happens without Him, without His knowledge. He is in control. He is on the throne. He is on the right hand of the Father. I am talking about my Savior. History is nothing but His story. He divides the history in the middle. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Change your attitude, change your thinking, stop praying seriously. You're ready for more serious prayer? Let's get back to the word. Acts chapter 6 verse 8. Acts chapter 6 verse 8. Here we find another man of God praying. But it was a difficult situation. It is a prayer of faith and power. But it was a situation when he was almost dying. And what was the thing that we can, uh, we'll see. Uh, Acts chapter 6 verse 8. Yes. Acts 6 8. A man full of God's grace and power. Grace and power. And power. Can God write that for, for about you today? A man full of God's grace and power. Your name. Can you rub off Stephen? Can you put your name there? Do you want to put your name? How many of you want to put that name instead of Stephen? Isn't that exciting? Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power. And what is the next one? Did, did great wonders and miraculous signs in the, in the people. And verse 15, what happened? All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin hmm. looked intently at Stephen and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Can you imagine? They saw an angel on the face of Stephen. Like an angel. How many of you want to be like an angel? Your problem is you are looking too much on the face of the models. They think they are angels or the film actress. I know I also like Jackie Chan and all that. But don't get too much carried away by all these fellows. All the, fo all the film actors and models and you know. Look at the face of Jesus. You become like an angel. Keep staring at him. Your face will be transformed. Your life will be transformed. Spend time with him. Listen to his voice. John chapter 10 it says, My sheep heareth my voice. John chapter 10 verse 27. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Do you hear his voice? Somebody came and asked me, do you hear God's voice? I said, yes. Then he asked, is it tenor or bass? <laughs> How to hear God's voice? Big problem. All camp I go, it will be one session. How to hear God's voice? It's like saying how to hear mother, mother's voice. Is there any session in your house? How to hear your mother's voice or father's voice? Any session? Anybody attended? How to hear your father's and mother's voice. But you go to a camp, the, you, how many of you have gone for a Christian evangelical camp meetings, youth meetings, youth camps? How many of you have gone? At least one session, how to hear God's voice, right? How to hear God's voice. How to hear your mother's voice. Stay in the mother's house. Stay in the father's house, you will listen to God's voice. If you stay in the enemy's house, you will listen to the enemy's voice. Depends on where you are parking. You park yourself in the wrong place and you want to hear the wrong voice. Don't listen to the wrong voice. Park yourself in the proper place. You sit in the house where you belong to, you will hear your father's voice. There's no doubt about God's voice. It is the problem is that you're parked in the wrong house. God wants you to come back to his house. God wants you to come and sit in his presence because he loves you. He wants to hug you this morning. <laughs> he wants to kiss you. He wants to look at your face and say, baby, I love you. The same Jesus who died for you on the cross of Calvary. Do you know that he loves you so much? Have you seen a mother taking up the baby ten times a day and kissing? Have you seen the mother looking upside down like this, like this? I've seen mothers doing all tamashas with the baby. After six months also, she'll be doing like this. Nearly one year, the baby is like this. Why, she hasn't finished seeing this baby? So much of love she has for this baby that she likes staring at this baby. I can tell you, my heavenly father has greater love than the mother. And he is looking for you. Are you willing to just stare at his face? At least for a minute. You will be transformed and the power will flow into your life. Here the Stephen who was actually living with grace and faith looked like an angel. I'm talking something from the word of God. I'm talking serious issues. I'm talking something which you usually don't hear. But this is what God wants you to hear this morning. I know he wants you to hear. Because he wants me to take come to Northeast. And if somebody is listening this afternoon, he is going to be transformed. And the power is going to fall and the fire is going to fall. You are going to be on fire for Jesus. Nothing can ever stop you. Once you are on fire, you are on fire forever. Let me take you a little forward. 
Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 20 to 12 and 13. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. When I came here, I asked uh, Roy, brother Roy Alex, how much time we have, what is the program? He said, this is a very informal, nice North uh, Eastern group. They don't have any time. Our session next is 3 o'clock, so maybe you can go up to that. I'm just joking. Don't mind that quickly. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 12 to 13. Because we are coming from another church which had... This just left us now. Yeah. As she kept on praying to the Lord, yes. Eli observed her mouth. Yes. Hannah was Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Yes. Eli this is called praying in the heart. What is it called? Praying in the heart. Sometimes I pray in the heart. How many of you pray in the heart without moving? I know a lot of people pray. Most of the patients I come to my room, I'll tell them, "Can you pray?" They'll say, "You pray." I said, you have never prayed? You had idli? Yeah. You had dosha? Yeah. But you have had a prayer? No. Idli and dosha, they have been eating all these years, but they have never prayed before. How can a man live without prayer? You can live without idli and dosha, but you cannot live without prayer. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word that comes from God. So then they will say, please tell us how to pray. So sometimes I have to teach them how to pray. I am sure you all know. Praying in the heart is very easy. Laughing in the heart also is very easy. Some people like to laugh in the heart. They don't laugh outside. When the angel came to Abraham and told him that you're going to have a child, Sarah was on the other side of the wall and was laughing inside the heart. <laughs> I'm so old. <laughs> what does that old man think? He think he can produce somebody now? <laughs> we have tried so many times. <laughs> it never worked. <laughs> Laughing inside, so many thoughts went. Ladies have thoughts flying like a yeah, like fast movie it was going. Abraham, no idea. He was sitting in the other side listening to the angel. God had all idea. God said, Sarah is laughing. Why is she laughing? <laughs> I don't like that laugh. Oh, he liked it. Abraham laughed first, Sarah laughed second. Too much of laughter, so the name was given Isaac which means laughter. Are you ready for your Isaac? Just laugh in the presence of God. God is going to give you an Isaac. Something new which you have never seen. Something new which you have never experienced. Something not from the earth but from above. I am waiting for things from above. Aren't you fed up of things from here? Just Amassing more and more stuff, local things here. Paul in Philippians chapter 1, 27 says, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Philippians chapter 1, 27. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If today's Paul is says, For me to live is my wife and to die is disaster. For me to live is my education, career, my car, my laptop, my latest iPhone. When you die, you have to leave all these things behind. Disaster. You are working for things which you are leaving behind. And not working for things which is forever. For me to live is Christ. Then dying is gain. And that is why the next two, three verses. Don't read that. Are very dangerous verses. It says, I am just desperately waiting to go. I am just fighting within myself whether to be here or be there. I told this to my wife last month. And she said, you don't have to fight. I am praying that you be here for some more years. <laughs> and the very next verse it says, but I am still here because of you. Otherwise, I will not be standing in Bhuvaneshwar in the Northeast Tech group preaching if I had gone off. So God wanted this neurosurgeon to be around. A hydrocephalic baby healed by his grace. Become a neurosurgeon. I have so much of testimony I can tell you. Before I started my hospital, I have a hospital of my own. I used to close, take leave and go around preaching. Yeah, I was working in another hospital, Trichur Hospital, Heart Hospital nearby. It was very difficult for me to go around because sometimes they won't give you leave. But I love to say hallelujah. 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 What can I give to my Jesus who has given me life? Who has given me my education? Who has given my degree? Given me everything that I have. Nothing else but praises. And that's why I praise it. 
Hallelujah. I want all of you to praise him. Doesn't matter exactly. George Coburn was blessed. You praise for some hydrocephalic baby, you also will get your miracle. Hallelujah. 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 When I found it very difficult, God gave me a hospital. Now I closed it and come. Will any sensible neurosurgeon close his own hospital? Only the one with the vision of heaven, whose life is all Christ-centered, who is dying to go there, living to be only with you to share the word of God. You and I need to have a closer walk with Jesus and he wants you to take a decision this afternoon, saying, Lord, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. All superficial Christianity and religion must go. You must mean business with Christ. Your emotions, your friends, your society has no role in influencing your life. The Bible has the role in influencing your life. The word is in control. Here is a lady who is praying from heart, but the priest misunderstood her. If you read verse 18, it says the priest thought, what, what was the priest? Priest thought, no, just little, read, read a little more. Ailey, one priest who lost the vision is sitting there. Yeah, Ailey, that where we were reading, Samuel chapter 12. Ailey thought she was drunk. Ailey thought she, the lady has had a couple of beers and come. She was actually praying. Sometimes when you pray, people may misunderstand you. Have you ever been drunk in the spirits? Anybody? I drink spirits. Not the local one, heavenly spirits. Once I got so drunk that I couldn't drive my car, I told my, my wife, I don't know what is happening. My hand and leg are not going. She said, what to do? We are in a place called Chalakudi. I said, the only way I know is my friend is working in this mission hospital. Let's go have some dinner. Because I know dinner will make me go down a little bit. I went and had dinner with them and drove back to Trishul. Get drunk in the spirit. Remain in the presence of God that you become so wobbly that you start walking not in this world but in the world to come. Have that experience right now, right now. Don't wait for tomorrow. God wants you to have this exciting life. A life of relationship with Jesus. Almighty God, all sufficient God. Doesn't matter if they think you're crazy and you're drunk, it doesn't matter. You are not, you're praying from your heart. You mean business with God. All your sorrows are going to go. All your difficulties are going to go. I'll tell you a big secret. Whenever I study, the previous day of the exam, my question, all the things I study come next day. That is how I pass exam. Very nice, no? If you walk with God, that is a good thing. So my room will be full of people to see what I am studying. <laughs> <laughs> all my days, all my days. Even for MBBS, MS, MCH, everything. Even now when I see patients, God will tell me this is the thing. Holy Spirit is wonderful. Counselor, advocate, guide, comforter. He helps you. What a big thing to have. It's much better than having local security and not local MBAs. Have this heavenly MBA around with you. He will guide you to do exactly what you need to do. The Spirit of God who wants to live in you, who wants to